Assalamu alaikum. In today's lecture, we shall talk about the equilibrium electrical circuit of a synchronous generator. You know that uh, a synchronous generator consists of a stationary part, which is called the stator. Uh, on this stator, we have a set of three phase coils. Uh, there is one coil over here, another coil uh, placed at 120 degrees from this coil. That is uh, this coil, and the third coil at another 120 degrees. Uh, that is at this location. Uh, the stator of a synchronous generator is also called armature because voltages are induced in the coils placed on the stator. The second part of the synchronous generator is uh, the rotor. Uh, a rotor may have uh, different shapes. For example, it can be a salient pole rotor uh, and it can also be a, a cylindrical rotor that is a non-salient pole rotor. Uh, this rotor is generally an electromagnet with field windings on it and therefore due to that uh, field circuit we have a rotor magnetic field. This rotor of synchronous generator is rotated by some kind of mechanical arrangement which is called prime mover. So this rotor is rotated with prime mover with some angular frequency omega. We know that when this rotor is rotated with this frequency voltages will be induced in these coils. A set of three phase voltages will be induced in these coils. And uh, the RMS value of the induced voltage, internal generated voltage, that is given by this expression. Where omega is the speed of rotation also equal to the frequency of the generated voltage for a simple two pole machine. Uh, this is frequency in radians per second and sometimes we are more interested in frequency in cycles per second. In that case, we shall have this expression. So this is RMS value of internal generated voltage. We want to have equivalent electrical circuit of this synchronous generator. As far as equivalent electrical circuit of this rotor is concerned, that is very simple. We have fields, uh, field winding on this rotor and the resistance of field winding that is denoted by Rf and the field coil uh, that is uh, represented by this uh, Lf. Uh, this field circuit is supplied uh, by a DC current from a DC voltage source and sometimes they also insert an additional variable resistor over here in series with the field circuit. This additional variable resistor helps us to control the magnitude of internal generated voltage because with this uh, field uh, resi adjustable resistor we can control the field current and field current therefore controls the flux in the machine and thereby it controls the internal generated voltage. Field windings are supplied with DC voltage source. So to obtain the uh, equivalent circuit for the second part that is stator, uh, we know that uh, this uh, stator, uh, these armature uh, coils, these are connected to uh, some electrical load and the voltage that is uh, available to the load that is called phase voltage represented by V phase, uh, also called output voltage. Uh, when uh, there is uh, no current in the uh, these coils, armature coils, that is the load connected to uh, the armature circuit that has infinite resistance. In that case, this phase voltage is equal to Ea. However, when current flows in this uh, armature windings, that is we have uh, load current, in that case V phase is no more equal to Ea. What, what are reasons for that? Firstly, first reason what we observe is that these field windings, uh, sorry, the armature windings, these are uh, coils with multiple turns, although these are made up of uh, copper wire, still these uh, coils have some resistance. So some of the voltage is dro dropped across resistance of the armature coils. That is uh, the second reason. Since we are dealing with uh, AC quantities, so inductance also plays its role. Therefore, some of voltage is dropped across inductance of these armature coils. 
inductive reactance of the armature coils. There is a third reason. Uh, when there is uh, no current uh, flowing in the armature, there is only one magnetic field, Br. However, when we connect a load to the uh, electrical load to the armature circuit, current starts flowing in these coils. And we know that current carrying conductor have their own magnetic field. So when load flows, uh, load current flows in the uh, armature winding, there is uh, another magnetic field due to current in these coils. That magnetic field will distort the original magnetic field and that effect is called armature reaction. That is another reason for V phase not equal to Ea if load current flows. So third reason is armature reaction. There is another a fourth reason. Uh, that reason is that uh, whether we have salient pole machine or non salient pole machine that also has effect uh, on this, uh, this thing. So that effect. So this last effect, uh, uh, incorporation of this effect into the equivalent electrical circuit that is uh, uh, much more involved, therefore we shall not address this effect. Uh, this effect is uh, more prominent in synchronous generator among all these. So we shall start our discussion with this effect, that is modeling of armature reaction in the equivalent electrical circuit of a synchronous generator. In the case uh, when no load is connected to the generator, uh, there is only one magnetic field and due to that magnetic field, voltage, voltages will be induced in these coils. Since the flux is uh, sinusoidally distributed along the, uh, this air gap, so uh, maximum voltage will be induced for corresponding to this particular position of the rotor. Maximum voltage will be induced in the coils where flux is maximum, where flux density is maximum. So this is the plane of maximum voltage induced, Ea maximum. The direction polarity of voltage induced will be uh, the conductors which are over here. This will be a uh, dot uh, that is coming out of the surface of the board. Here it will be cross. Uh, when this rotor is rotating in counterclockwise direction. When load is connected to the generator, current will start flowing in the uh, armature coils. How much current uh, will uh, be flowing and what will be the phase angle of that current? That depends upon the load connected to the generator. So here we assume that uh, we have connected an inductive load to the synchronous generator. That is uh, the current which will flow uh, in these coils will lag the generated voltage that is corresponding to this time instant if this is the plane of maximum generated voltage uh, then the plane of maximum current that will lag this plane that is This is the plane of uh, maximum current. Why? Because we have connected a lagging load. The time instant uh, when voltage is maximum in this coil, the, at the same time instant current will not be maximum in this coil. Rather, it will be maximum at a coil somewhere over, in a coil which is somewhere over here. Due to this current, due to the, the current in the coils on this stator there will be a magnetic field. This is the plane of maximum current. So the uh, direction of flux density vector due to current in these coils that will be perpendicular to the surface. That is in this direction indicated by thumb. This finger in the direction of current, current entering here, leaving here. This is the direction of the flux density vector due to current in the stator winding. So we have uh, this flux density vector let's denote it by ds flux density vector due to stator windings so when there was no current there was only one magnetic field vr and that was rotating that generated voltage in the coils now there are two rotating magnetic fields one is vr and second one is bs and the total voltage that will be generated that will be 
due to both of these magnetic fields. That is, uh, we have the effect of this rotating magnetic field, we have incorporated it in the expression for Ea and then we have uh, another voltage due to, due to this rotating magnetic field that is E stator and the sum of the two voltages will be the phase voltage. Is this point clear? If uh, there were no current in the coils, that is no load is connected, uh, there is only one magnetic field rotating in this direction with this frequency that will induce voltage, voltage in these coils and that voltage is represented by Ea. When you connect the load to the generator, uh, current starts flowing in the coils and due to that current, there is another magnetic field which is also rotating. So two rotating magnetic fields, this rotating magnetic field generates this voltage and this rotating magnetic field generates this voltage, sum of the two voltages is the phase voltage. If we uh, talk about uh, flux densities, uh, the uh, Br is responsible for generation of this one and Bs is uh, responsible for generation of this one. These are flux density vectors. Net flux density is the phasor sum of these two flux densities. So how to model this effect uh, into electric equivalent electrical circuit? What we observe is that E stator, E stator, what is plane of uh, this uh, E stator maximum? E stator maximum, the plane of E stator maximum is this one, parallel to Bs, similar to the situation, this Ea maximum, the plane of Ea maximum is parallel to Br, similarly E stator maximum that is parallel to Bs and we can see that this voltage E stator maximum that lags the current, the, this plane of maximum current by an angle of 90 degrees. This uh, Bs was perpendicular to the surface of this plane and therefore this E stator lags this current by an angle of 90 degrees. Furthermore, the magnitude of this thing that is dependent upon this current. More is the current, stronger will be this uh, flux density vector and higher will be the induced voltage. So Ea that is proportional to current Ia. The stator voltage that is proportional to the armature current and it lags, it lags uh, this voltage lags the current by an angle of 90 degrees. So, another angle of 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees, since this lags the current. And uh, then we can just uh, add the proportionality constant. So, Ea that is equal to J, uh, this is proportionality constant. You can give it any name. So, this is anyway a constant. Therefore, a uh, V-phase, V-phase that is equal to Ea minus Jxia. So this Br is responsible for generation of this one, Bs responsible for generation of this one and their phasor sum is responsible for generation of uh, V-phase. Their phasor sum can be simply obtained by this graphical technique. This is D net, this vector, this is D net, net flux density vector and V phase will be in phase with this flux density vector, V phase. Uh, the same expression can also be written in this form, Ea is equal to V phase plus Jx. I A. So, have you seen any element in electrical circuit where voltage 
and current are heated by this thing. So that is the inductor. In an inductor, voltage across inductor is J multiplied by inductive reactance multiplied by the current, phasor for the current. Therefore, uh, the armature reaction in electrical circuit can be re represented by an inductor. We have, uh, we represent the internal generated voltage Ea by a voltage source Ea and then armature reaction can be modeled by an inductive reactance Jx. So we have modeled this effect armature reaction. Rest of the two effects are very easy. Uh, the resistance uh, uh, of the coils, we can just uh, append a resistor over here, Ra, the resistance of armature winding and uh, the second effect that is inductive reactance of this armature winding is represented by an inductor over here, Jxa, inductive reactance of armature windings. And this is uh, the output voltage V phase. Current uh, IA is found in this direction. That is, uh, if we incorporate all these effects, V phase will be equal to EA, the generated voltage, minus voltage drop across uh, this uh, reactance, inductive reactance, JX IA which models the armature reaction minus uh, IA RA voltage drop across this resistor minus J IA uh, XA uh, these uh, two inductive reactances XA and X can be lumped together to write this relation EA minus J uh, X plus XA into IA minus Ia Ra. Uh, these two inductive reactances written together, uh, these are named as Xs, synchronous reactance. Synchronous reactance includes this uh, inductive reactance of the inductance, self-inductance of the coils and then the inductance which incorporates the effect of armature reaction minus Ia Ra. Uh, here we can lump the two together JXS and resistance. So here we have uh, modeled only one phase of this uh, synchronous generator. We have uh, three phases and each phase will have uh, uh, the similar equivalent circuit. So, total three phase equivalent electrical circuit of the synchronous generator is given by this diagram. This is IA1 in the phase 1, this is IA2, and this current is IA3. Likewise, EA, EA1, EA2, and EA3. So this is the equivalent electrical circuit of a three-phase synchronous generator. So in a three-phase synchronous generator, three-phase voltages are coming out of the armature. You can connect these three-phase voltages either in star configuration or in delta configuration. Uh, so here is uh, a delta connection of these uh, three phase coils in the armature uh, and here is a star connection. In case of uh, delta connection, you can see that the phase voltage, this phase voltage, uh, this voltage, phase voltage is also equal to the terminal voltage. In case of uh, star connection, phase voltage is not the same as terminal voltage. Uh, you can verify that in case of uh, this uh, star connection with sinusoidal voltage signals, this terminal voltage is square root of 3 times the phase voltage. 
remember that these are only the electrical connections of uh, these things. Uh, this does not sh uh, show the physical placement of coils. You know how these coils are placed in the synchronous generator. These coils are placed in the stator. These three coils, uh, this coil, this, this, these coils are placed in the stator of the synchronous generator in this way. First coil, that is, uh, uh, we have uh, a coil, rectangular coil with multiple turns. and place it like this one one side each side of the coil over here another side of the coil over here and the back end of this coil not shown front end also not shown and similarly for the other coils this diagram only shows their electrical connections that is for example for this coil these two ends are these two ends of the coil and one end is over here and second end of this coil is connected to the second coil one more coil which is for example over here the second coil and likewise uh, the third coil so this connection means that you have just connected one end of each coil uh, and the second end uh, of each coil is over here in this particular star connection uh, in the next uh, lecture, we shall talk about the phasor diagram of the synchronous generator.